Good afternoon, part two of this uh, PCB build where I'm fitting uh, a dual 555 timer and it's quite literally a dual 555. I've shoved two 555s into the socket which is intended for a 556 dual timer but we can bodge up a dual timer with two 555s. And uh, there it is, the completed 556 dual timer made out of two 555s and of course this can be these this this mess can be pulled out when I receive a 556 and I can just plug the proper chip into the socket right let's continue on with soldering on the components on the board and uh, the pot as well and then we should be able to get a variable pulse width uh, one kilohertz oscillator from the output. Now you can see that uh, the first oscillator is A stable because here pin 2 is connected to pin 6, threshold to trigger, and they're the same pin numbers on a regular 555. So if you're familiar with making A stable oscillators, you'll know that pin 2 connects to pin 6. On the other one, We've got a uh, threshold, which is pin 12 in this case, is connected back round to discharge. And that shows that the second uh, timer, 555 timer, is in monostable mode. So I'm going to get some components in my board now. There it is. And uh, try and get the A stable triggering the monostable. Now this capacitor here I've set quite high. The circuit calls for a 560 picofarads, but I don't have any of those, so I've put in a 470. Um, actually, I probably should have gone over value. Uh, no, I should go under value, that's right. And then if I need to increase the capacitance a little bit, I can solder another capacitor in parallel. So yes, I've done it the right way around. And that's why I've lifted this capacitor up so that I can stick something onto the same legs if necessary. Let's plow on. Now I've just discovered that my one meg um, potentiometer is actually logarithmic. It's an A1M and in fact the original article does say uh, one meg log, forget the mounting frame thing, and in the circuit we have, uh, where is it, up here, so they've got clockwise, the wiper is connected to the clockwise side. Now have I done that in my schematic? I've got, now the dot is the counterclockwise side. So the wiper is connected to uh, plus 11 volts and it is the clockwise side. So that's consistent, but does it work on the board? Let's find out. So if the pot sits there and I turn this clockwise, which is that way, then the wiper, the middle one, will be connected to this end one. So those should be connected together on the board. And they are, there's a little link running down there. And this is also plus 12 volts. So you can see that runs over to there, 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 and eventually over to the power supply. So uh, this this point on the power supply, plus 11 volts actually, as called in the article. So I'm happy that's the right way around. I'm just gonna break that tag off, solder the pot in. This is a tricky one because I wanna hold the pot, make sure I've got the alignment right, and then get some solder in there. That's probably enough to get the pot fixed. And then I can check that the this alignment and this alignment are all correct before I solder the two remaining pins. Looks pretty good. Now I might as well put the 22 microfarads in on the circuit side of my decoupling resistors uh, to just calm that uh, part of the circuit down again a, a little bit. So just got to check this pin one on the JST is plusative. That goes through a 47 ohms, uh, negative goes through 220 ohms. So this is pause on this side. That links through to there and that's grounded. So that's definitely pause. So I want to get my capacitor the right way around. 
tantalums, of course, are marked with a positive symbol. So I'm pretty sure that goes that way around on the positive side. And then, of course, on the negative side, pause on my cap will actually go to the ground plane. So that's my circuit board finished as far as I want to go. I've not fitted the transistor driver stage. Uh, that's not necessary to see the signal coming out, which I'm going to pick off on the right hand side of this resistor. It's the resistor that drives the first transistor Q1. So just on the back end of that, uh, without the minus 11 volts, um, it's not needed. Both of these chips run on uh, positive 12 to ground. So I can use my connector that I made last time. This one's single 12 volt supply and get that on the scope and see whether we've got pulse width modulation on the potentiometer. Ready to go. Oscilloscope hooked up, hooked up to the output. Let's plug in the 12 volts and right we've got about 50% mark space. Uh, oh that goes down from that. Oh, I mustn't touch the underside of the board. So the potentiometer at full clockwise gives me 50% mark space. I'm not quite sure whether that's right. It might be. I don't really know what the circuit asks for. Remember, I've got that uh, capacitor that's the wrong value in there. That will change the timing of the monostable a little bit. If I turn it back, that certainly reduces. And then it goes down to a very short mark space. What's interesting here is that the potentiometer has two very clearly defined ranges. And I noticed this before when I did some tests on these logarithmic pots. They're really just two linear pots of different values, uh, end to end. So it tracks along one value pot, which you can see as a slow moving adjustment. And then when you hit the halfway point, it suddenly goes much faster. So really it's just two linear tapers attached end to end and you can see it really quite clearly there. But this only goes up to 50%. Now that might be enough. I don't know. That might be what this is meant to do. And it goes down to almost zero. In fact, you can see the height of it just drops a little bit at the bottom end, but it doesn't quite turn off. And again, that might be intentional. But uh, to me, what's more interesting is seeing that sort of two taper two taper sections in what's supposed to be a logarithmic pot and it's really nothing of the sort. And of course the other thing I haven't fitted on this board is the socket on the bottom. Now that's going to use one of my existing daughter boards to take um, a stereo quarter inch jack for the foot switch. So that'll go on afterwards and then of course the pot and the stereo socket fit through holes on the front panel. So this board is held uh, in two points that'll be nice and stable on the front panel. So that's really it. My uh, dual 555 timer which is meant to be a 556 which I didn't have so I had to bodge wire two 555s um, is working. I've got adjustment between approximately 0% PWM and about 50% PWM in these two very distinct ranges there. So that's that board essentially finished. I, I can add the transistors for the final output driver and I can put the minus 12 volts on there. It doesn't do a lot. It just pulls the output signal to the extremes of plus 12 and minus 12. So that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm happy that it all works. That's my PCB done. So cheerio.